Hi, welcome to Super Psychology. In this video, what I thought I'd just take a quick look at is how psychology A-level is structured across the different papers. And I also wanted to go through what some of the previous year's grade boundaries were with you, because I know that students and teachers alike always find this information really useful. Let's begin then taking a look at the structure of the examination itself. So as you can see there on the slide, we've got three different papers, paper one, paper two and paper three. Paper one, there are four topics. Well, technically five. I'll talk about that in a moment. We've got memory, attachment, social and psychopathology. Now, each of the papers is out of 96 marks. So you can see there there's equal weighting for memory, attachment, social and psychopathology, with each of those sections being 24 marks. Paper two, slightly different format, so it's still out of 96 marks. Here we've got approaches for 24 marks and biopsych for 24 marks. But there it is, the beast of research methods on paper two, worth 48 marks in paper two. Now, although research methods on its own is worth 48 marks in paper two, research methods in itself will appear across all papers. And that's why I said in paper one, technically five, because it's gonna be a proportion of research methods grades across those different papers. So AQA have basically said that the proportion of research methods is gonna be about 25 to 30% of your overall grade. Now across the pre-papers, there's 288 marks in total, which means that you're looking at about, wait for it, 86 marks of research methods. So think about it, there's 48 marks of research methods in paper two. It means that across paper one, two, and three, there will be an additional 38 marks of research methods. And don't be fooled into thinking that just because research methods is such a huge chunk on its own, that there can't be research methods questions in approaches and biopsych in paper two, because indeed they can. Now, within research methods as well, 10% of those marks are going to be maths based marks. Now, Luckily, the maths content in terms of the expectation at A-level is around kind of higher level GCSE. So for the most part, hopefully you won't have to be learning too many new things for it. OK, then on to paper three. So paper three has a core topic of issues and debates. And what that means is that every student in the country will study issues and debates. But then we've got the optional blocks. Now, in the optional blocks, it's usually the teacher that decides or the kind of school that you're in what you're going to cover in those different sections. So, for example, uh, you might do relationships, forensics, schizophrenia. You might study gender you might study cognition and development and I think that's really important to note because it can be quite scary when you look at that A-level textbook and it's rather large that's because it's got all of the optional topics in there as well. Now I don't really think we can talk about the psychology A-level as also talking about what are known as the assessment objectives so you might be familiar with assessment objectives from other subjects um, for example English and psychology itself has its own assessment objectives and I'll talk a little on the next slide about what the proportion of marks are in those different objectives but here they are they're called AO1, AO2 and AO3 and you might even get to the stage in your A-level course where the teachers just use AO1, AO2, AO3, and you know what it means. In a nutshell, when we're talking about the AO1 assessment objective, it's basically your ability to be able to understand something and describe it. So AO1 type questions might ask you to describe a theory or outline a theory. The AO3 objective, I'm skipping AO2 for now, the AO3 objective is the evaluate part of that. So you, I might get a question that's describe and evaluate. That's an AO1 and an AO3 type question. I could also get an AO3 type question on its own that just asks me to evaluate something. Now the AO2, I would say, is always a discriminator in terms of students. It's a really sneaky obsess assessment 
assessment objective, which is related to application of knowledge. So this is where you're given, we might call it a STEM, we might call it a scenario or maybe a context question, and you're asked to apply your knowledge to a novel situation. And that really, really shows whether or not students really truly understand, because you can't have AO2 without truly understanding AO1. Now here's just the information about the different assessment objectives just across the exam. This comes from AQA. So we've got the three different objectives there and you can see if you focus on that overall weighting column, overall the proportion of marks for all of them is pretty much the same but a little bit more weighted to the AO3. And again, you can look across the different papers there and see that in paper two, you've got a lot of application. Now, the reason you've got so much application in paper two for the AO2 assessment objectives is because of research methods, because all of that research methods knowledge that you're going to need is going to have to be for the most part delivered in context in order to get the marks. Right. Now, like I said previously, one of the questions that often gets asked is what are the previous grade boundaries? Now, obviously, we're a bit limited here in terms of where we can go up to because of COVID. I haven't included the detail from the 2021 exam here just because the numbers are slightly small. So I don't necessarily think it's representative. So we've got 2017, 18 and 19 and the percentage that were needed for each grade and also an average there as well. And this information can be quite useful for you as a student if you want to understand your progress in, related to, in relation to previous exam series and also for teachers as well who are thinking, what should my uh, grade boundaries be? Because if you look there, a nice grade boundary, a fair grade boundary for you to use for an A star would probably be about 75% for an A. 65, B, 55, 65, etc. Now, the thing is with grade boundaries, of course, is they do change. They could get higher, they could get lower. So I'd always kind of ear on the side of caution with those. Okay, I hope you found this video useful. Do check out some of my other videos as well.